Did minute. you put this in yourself? No. They had it. Yeah, they had it. So that was the whole deal. Like people in the neighborhood was like, I don't know if you know, but Jackson Market's got a pizza oven in the back that no one's using. Nobody was using it. And I said, Jackson Market has a has a back. I didn't know, <laughs> I didn't even know any of this was back here. I would send my kids in for bread, you know, maybe a, a dozen eggs, but I don't come down here and buy sandwiches or anything like that. I think it's really nice, and I, what you have going for you, in my opinion, is it's a secret. It's almost like. Oh shoot, I didn't even know this existed. Oh shoot, what? There's pizza here? Oh my goodness. So, I can't get much, like, crowning, right? It's okay. If it burns up, we know it's gonna taste good. <laughs> what are you looking to get in terms of your crowning? Oh, just, you know, the, the, the individual slices of cheese, the strands, you know, the... Like the crown, like Jimmy Hank? Yeah, like free you, know, know, the, you know what I mean? Do you and know I, his secret? What's that? Uh, yeah, tell me the secret. Oh, okay. He uses the mozzarella cheese that's store-bought that's already pre-shredded. He's only using mozz? He's uh, not using white cheddar? I don't know that he has a proprietary mix, but I know for from personal experience, that's what helps kind of make that stick. So it, like, dries out a little bit. I, Other I, people have used different fillers, but actually, for the most part, I, I'm pretty sure it's the Costco brand, too. It's funny because I, I saw a video of his recently that he was building. And he built everything else except the edge of cheese. Mm. And I was wondering if he was kind of like holding back on that. So what I was... A little, little proprietariness. I was almost going to comment because he did an Instagram live and he was just building out pizzas with Kirkland cheese. And I was like, hey, bro, did you know that uh, pizza makers kind of recommend you don't use that because of the taste? And then I started kind of putting things together and saying and, and thinking... Wait, maybe that's the secret to his Frico. And then I tried it one day, and I was like, oh my goodness, I can show you the picture of the Frico that I made, and I was like, dude, this is it. I really liked your uh, your interview with uh, Mike's Hot Honey. The bottom line is, you know, it, it's being grateful to the people for taking the time to go on. 100%. Um, and then also, just kind of giving you props, just like you said, like to have people, you know, have, have, have it not just happen in the void. Yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, they're spending maybe a two hours, right? An hour of actual conversation, and then, like, there's all the emails that happen outside of it. And so to invest that much time to some guy who doesn't deserve it, it's like, dude, you should be heard. Wow, sexy. You know what I'm looking for. Is that Belgioso? Yeah, and uh, I like these pre-sliced ones because I get I cut it in six, so each slice gets its own, you know, slice of cheese. Oh, beautiful! Um, I was doing batons and cutting with fresh loaves, mm -hmm. um, and that's a cool look too. But I like this one; it, it looks cleaner for me. Anything that I can do to eliminate prep, I haven't gone with you know any pre-shredded cheeses. And someone told me that Grande doesn't even have uh, additives, right? It doesn't have the caking agents. No, for their New York blend, the I, shredded. You know, the guy came by here and gave me his card. I wasn't here or he gave his information up front. And then I emailed the guy because I was trying to get some prices and figure out how I'd get some. And I mean, it's all through a distributor, that's why I feel like. So the question you're asking is... Who the distributor is? See, that's one of the funny things about like Expo, especially the first time I went two years ago. Mm -hmm. I'd go talk to people and they'd be like, who's your distributor? And I'd be like, I don't have a distributor. Yeah. Like this year, uh, I, I do have a distributor do uh, for a lot of uh, product. It's called Worldwide Produce. Um, that's who I get my Caputo from. So when I first moved in here, they had a couple bags of flowers I was using. I was using some central milling AP that I was getting from Costco for, of course, a killer deal, right? Because everything's cheap at Costco. So anyway, uh, and then I picked up, so I started looking at the other flowers that the Worldwide has. And so they had Tony's flower, mm -hmm. which is double all, right? Yeah. So I'm all great. I'll stop using Caputo and I'll start using Tony's flower. And then I go back to the Bible, and it says not for Neapolitan style pizza, right? Because he's a high, he's a high protein flour. So I did get some King Arthur AP. Because what I've been doing is a third Caputo, a third higher strength. Like I was using Harvest King, and then the Central Milling, 53 a bag. Guess how much? 55 pound bag of beehive from Central Millions. 
it's more expensive than the Caputo. I also uh, just listened to the Caputo uh, episode too. And I love how you broke down that myth of, because I, I tell people all the time, well, you know, they get the flour here, and then they ship it back to Italy, and then they ship it back here, and that's why it costs so much. But obviously, maybe that's not the case. Yes, I see that. That's a secret weapon right there. Beautiful. Does it have a name? Um, yeah, this is my Kenfo. My Kenfo. You know who it's from, right? No. It's got the name right in it. Mike. Kenfo. Kenfo? Ken Forkish. Oh. So that's Ken Forkish. And then, I, I dream, how many people do you know that are pulling a double pre ferment in their pizza doughs? Not many. So this is a poolish because this is Tony's recipe. Gotcha. Should be a 19-hour poolish and then I generally, you know, get about 24 hours. This is uh, this this got started this morning. It was down there. We'll probably get up to about there. Nice. So you're using a poolish with yeast and sourdough. So the sourdough starter, I can get my numbers out, but it, it's a very small percentage of the Levant. Okay. But it is, you know, a good sourdough. I add it for complexity. I don't add it for leavening, right? The leavening is already taken care of with this. That's cool. And I am dialing back my commercial yeast. Uh, I was using 28 grams plus the five grams that are in here, so that's 33. Uh, but every week I kind of like just take a couple more grams out. So first I went from 28 to like 20, and now I went to like 18, and then this week I went 17. Because in this, so I got 36 dough balls in here, and by the time it rises, it, it comes all the way up. So I couldn't, I couldn't enlarge my batches. Um, I just have to make dough more times. Let me ask you, what was your, um, if you had to ballpark it, what was your investment for this space? Zero. Zero. It was all here. Everything's here. The oven, the oven was here. The mixer is here. Um, so that's like half of this whole battle. So, dude, I wanted to open a pizza press. So I was looking at spaces out in the valley. Um, there was one joint. It was kind of like a, a hamburger place that had a good hood, right? Because it's all about the venting with the oven, I guess. And then I realized, man, no, this is already, it's like a hamburger joint. Like, I'm not going to come in here and make it into a pizza place. It just wasn't going to work. And then there was a place in El Segundo that when my real estate agent sent me down there, like, I look in the place, and it is a beautiful pizzeria. It, it, it didn't have a pizza master, but it looked like a two- or three-year-old oven, like deck oven, small space. Uh, so that was, like, $7,000 a month and $55,000 for the equipment. Right? So that would have been a check for about hundred grand. As I said, I was ready to get myself a good opportunity. This wasn't it. So I took my wife down there on a Saturday. It's in an industrial park where like McDonald Douglas is. It's right by the airport. Um, a lot of high rise buildings, right? And then I took my wife down there on a Saturday. There's 150 uh, spaces in the parking lot. Two cars in the parking lot at like one o'clock on a Saturday. Right, so it's all that office traffic. Which, what happened to the office traffic in the past two years? Done. Nobody's in the office. Zooming. So, no wonder this guy went out of business. Sheesh. Um, yeah, you need really good foot traffic. I knew that was not happening. Okay. So, bring us to today. How much are you paying for this spot? <laughs> How much am I paying to be here? 15% of sales. You know, I, I have a mentor um, who's in the franchise world. And when I told him 15%, he felt that was very high too. And then like, but that's all utilities. I didn't think it was high because you're, what, what is, what's the traditional 10% for hard costs? I don't, I don't know what type of traditions are out there. You know, again, like it's all the equipment, right? It's all my utilities. You're getting their customers, right? Or are you marketing? Or well, would you say it's a little bit of both? Like, well, what brings people here? I mean, it's the great pizza and the great service, bro. So you're saying like this entire patio knew about you? No, what I'm saying is um, that's what I'm focused on here because the atmosphere is already a built-in thing. Gotcha. Right? So yes, people come here because this is a super chill place. I mean, it's kind of, it's very quiet tonight because of the weather, right? right? If, it, if it was warm, um, even on a Sunday night, I mean, there's still a few people here, uh, but today at 4.30, this whole place was packed and it sounded like a rock concert because there were so many people here. Yeah, so for me, I, I like how this slices. You know, and each slice is going to have its own piece of cheese. You know, 
this is symmetrical. I'm more of a symmetrical type of person. Me too. I, I, I do appreciate the scatteredness. Um, and you didn't see how much basil I put on here. I'd probably kill an Italian. Because you know what, you get three or four pieces of basil. I'm more like, you know, hey, you don't have to have it in every bite, but the basil makes this pizza. Yeah. Not too bad. I mean, again, the oven is cooled down because I'm done with stress, but um, it was in there for a while. And then again, I'm probably using too much cheese. I don't care. Sometimes less is more, and sometimes we want more is more. You gonna bring it to me? Yes.